I walked on, and there were a bunch of children there. And as we walked out of a corridor, down a corridor, and out into this huge space of what looked like could be anywhere, like Agoura Hills or someplace out here, a park, the children moved away from me. And I was like really hurt, you know, I was like, oh man. And Mornay immediately picked up what I was feeling and he said, it isn't you, we have been teaching them about your race. <laughs> it's really not all that funny. <laughs> okay, um, they were afraid of us. You know, and these are children I have never seen before, but immediately felt our energy, my energy, because I represented all of us. You know, and I do the best I can, sorry. I mean, <laughs> but you know, I got my own stuff to work out too. So, you know, they're learning, and, and, and I'm, I'm amazed that they, you know, they still want to come back and, and help. Another time I had been. Um, waiting for them, they finally showed up and as I was walking into the control room I was being led by another Andromedan uh, Morinay was looking at a bunch of meters on the wall and some monitors measuring our atmosphere and he looked really sad so I said to him, I said, what's the matter? and he just pointed to the atmosphere and he goes don't they understand that it's here because they needed it? They don't understand our suicidal tendencies. They, they don't. Uh, I guess they have the perspective that we should really know better. I don't know where they got that. Um, so, I mean, that's just one of them, you know. Um, uh, another time, Viseus was watching television on the ship. They were picking up television. And I told them that's not a good idea. <laughs> Even on Earth, that's not a good idea. <laughs> And um, he had been watching a news broadcast about um, about a shooting in Chicago. That's what it was, where a cop shot a po uh, a cop shot a, a man, a black man, and then rushed over and tried to save his life. He had a hard time understanding why the policeman would try to take the life and then try to save it. He, he didn't understand the contradiction, and I don't know that they've still clearly dealt with that. Um, you know, our, our reality that we know, that we accept as reality, is extremely foreign to a lot of other different races. They simply don't understand it, and there's like no way we could really truly rationalize it to them when they truly come from a space of unconditional love or mutual respect. Um, and I have not done a good job in explaining it to them. Because when I really stopped to think about it, it didn't make any sense to me at all, either. Um, so, as Val would say, it's time for a new paradigm. And I guess that's what Ramtha is doing, teaching all of you and, and those before you and those to come after you. Um, I've given a lot of thought to our race and the character issues and I just want to share with you some of my thoughts on the human race and about people. A lot of this comes from my own experience dealing with us. A human being whose heart shows no passion is a person who doesn't have a life. A human being who doesn't give from his heart or her heart is a person who will lie to you. I've had to learn that the hard way. A human being whose heart is committed to nothing is a person who will not try, who will only take. A human being who is not willing to risk or take chances for love is a person who is absolutely empty inside. They're already dead. They're just sucking up air. I've, I've come to this conclusion because of my relationship with Morinay and Viseas. I absolutely love these two beings. They are my fathers, my brothers, my friends. Um, 
and you know, in some respect, even my sons, because I've had the opportunity to, to teach them. You know, I mean, even English, it was like, you know, I felt like I was a really big deal, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, there's, there's so much information out there that is totally bogus. I went to the Star Visions conference. I'll probably get into trouble because this is beyond video, but I'm not going to do any more anyway. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't pull any punches. I really don't. I mean, what the hell? Life's too short, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this incarnation. <laughs> okay, we have a difference of opinion. <laughs> Hey, you know, I've been hanging out with those guys and, you know, they live thousands of years. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. But I don't want to live a thousand years here. <laughs> Not the way it is. <laughs> okay, where was I? <laughs> Star Visions, thank you. See, it's the insomnia, little munchkins around 3.30. Somebody wrote in a card we got, up around midnight, when you hear that mournful cry, just remember at 3 a.m., you can give it another try. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's so true. The Star Visions, there was a guy there who had some pictures of some craft, and he said that uh, he has been in contact with Syrians. And he mentioned Cirrus B. And uh, he, then he went on to make a speech, and uh, Jesus Christ is a starship commander. He lives on Earth underground in a place called Valley of the Echoes, and that they're coming back, and there will be a war, and those who are not in favor of Jesus will be destroyed. <clears throat> and they gave this guy a standing ovation. I'm not kidding. They gave this guy a standing ovation. And um, it was really sad because these people don't have a clue. They don't want to take responsibility. You know, they can totally thwart this war. We don't have to do anything really about this as long as we started working and learning to live with each other, granting mutual respect, having natural tolerance for our race. And I know it's not easy because of all the conditioning but folks, I need your help. I desperately need your help. You know, we don't need to create the book of Revelations, and that's exactly what we're doing. And there are beings out there that have technology that are more than happy to help us play this thing out because we are a threat to them. And the reason we're a threat is not only who you are spiritually, which I will get into, but it's also because of our genetics. Okay? They... Our physicality was the Earth, phys uh, the Terran physicality, which is what we're known as, was melded between human extraterrestrial and the primate race, as this is what I've been taught. And it is that melding of those two races which gave us our incredible extremes of emotion, which is why we can hold so much creative energy inside of us. This is why. They're concerned, and this is why the Andromedans are in awe of our creative energy. Because here they have to use technology to create some of their physicality. We don't. They're amazed that when you leave your house, okay, when you leave your house, everything is still there when you come back. It doesn't disintegrate. Now, if you live in South L.A., well, then you've got to worry about your stuff being there. <laughs> They're amazed at that, of the intent and the energy that it creates to create every one of those little tchotchkes that you have on your shelf. <clears throat> They're amazed. Because they're, they're very simple. They're very, very simple. They don't have all the little stuff that we have. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
according to the Andromedans, what they have been able to discover, and apparently other races also have discovered this, is that they say that in our, what we know is our, our universe, which is a holograph, that there are 11 layers. I'll just deal with this. 11 densities, and now apparently there is a 12th. This is their perspective, okay? And they say that we fell into time, into physicality. They say, the Andromedans say, that many of the extra, other extraterrestrial races are fascinated by what it is we know that we have locked up inside of us because we have already evolved to that level and then have come back to start all over again. They don't have access to this. What they think we know, what apparently is locked up inside of us. Not only that, but apparently we specifically chose this physicality because of the vibration that we held because of the primate and human because the physicality was able to hold such an extreme of emotions that we chose this physicality. And when you couple that with the idea that this physicality is also made up of 22 races, one of which includes the Andromedan race, they say we're royalty. They say that every single one of you is royalty on this planet. that you are royalty and that many of the other extraterrestrial races, particularly the benevolent ones, acknowledge this because of the fact that we are spirit and we have these genetics inside of us. The, the, the dark ones, which include the gray men and others, they see us as beasts because of the, because of the primate. How can we allow this to surpass us? And this is why the constant genetic and mental manipulation. And in talking with Jay-Z, you know, like she was saying earlier, we both, we, we talk different ways, but we're really, in many respects, saying the same thing. They're concerned that once we move out of our prison of third density, that we will radically change everything. I don't know about you, but I need a change. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so burned out. <laughs> I want to go home. Um, the Andromedans told me that the reason that I am one of four contactees, um, apparently there will be more added in the very near future, and I hope that some of that has to do with my griping. Um, <laughs> I have, I've bitched and moaned and everything else. <laughs> it's just, it's just impossible, you know, it's just not enough people. Um, that there will be more, and those that will be contacted, you, the reason I and the other three were chosen, I guess, in the first round um, is because that apparently when they were here, they had a colony 62,300 years ago. It's an approximation. Um, they were here for only 65 years that I was one of them that was here. That's how I got here. Okay? And there was a battle, and they were chased out of here. And um, I was killed in that. So, uh, you know, when I, when I write this number on the board, 62,000, that's a large number to me, you know. And uh, I know it's linear time, and I know it feels like it was just yesterday, um, but I know that I, I'm from another place. And all of you are. You know, your souls were not born and hatched here. I can tell you that.